Okay, good evening everybody. So today we're going to learn about the chapter 4, which is the data link layer in the OSI model. Okay, so for this chapter 4, I'm going to cover the data link layer protocols and then the media access control data link frames. We got the extra information about the data link layer protocols. Okay, let's have a look of the data link layer protocols. So before we go for a data link layer protocols, if you still remember, can recall back for our seven layers of OSM models, it will be located at this data link layer. And for today, we will going to name this data link layer the PDU name, which is the packet data unit. Yeah? It's called FRAM, F-R-A-M-E, FRAM. Okay, so later on, you will listening to what I mentioned about FRAMs, 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 and so on, right? So it's referring to the, the FRAM sent from this layer, okay, to pass to the destination. Now, have a look of our protocol here. Uh, we, if you encapsulate for uh, information for a data link layer, you can see the architecture of this data link layer a bit special whereby uh, it will divide it into two sub layer. The first one is logical link control sub layer and the second one will be the media access control sub layer. Now why you have these two sub layer? If you still remember the data link layer have the encapsulation for the header and trailer, now, not only header and trailer, but inside this architecture here, it will divide it into two sub layer. The first one is LLC, which is the logical link control, and the second one will be the MSC. Now, why is it so? Uh, if you remember that last time, we have the order of our operating system, right? So we have to plug in our time drive inside the computer, and then we have to install the driver. Okay, but now we don't have to do so because all the features of this data link layer uh, with the advanced technology, we have to plug and play. So plug and play is because we have the hardware. Okay, the hardware is a uh, support at this uh, media access control sub layer. We plug in the hardware into our computer and then the sub layer for this LLC, which is involved in the software, help us to tie up the hardware and the software to pass to the network layer and then the rest of the upper, upper than this. That's why you will have a plug and play. Okay, so what will be the architecture protocol all inside here? Later, we will go through very details uh, for each of the protocols here. Yeah? So this is the very basic architecture of the data link layer. Okay, so when we go through the 4.2 media access control, um, this is just to tell you that media access control will have the independent uh, features whereby when I want to, when, let's say for example, I'm the sender, so I want to send a frame to the destination here, so I can use any of the media, maybe I'm using a cable to connect to this router, and for this router to pass to the satellite, and then from here also go to the satellite, and then from the destination side, satellite go to the wireless router, and when you reach to the destination also, you might use the wireless router. Uh, so what does this tell you? It said that in this media access control, it will support a media independent. No matter what numbers of hop that you want to pass through, your intermediary device yeah, okay, will accept any frames from one medium to another medium, or will encapsulate, decapsulate, until you reach through here, the destination, then your router will directly pass through the seven layers of OSI model and go through this computer. But we don't, we use the seven layers of OSI model for illustration purposes. Okay, but of course in a real life uh, example will be four layers, which is TCP IP. Okay, now um, for here, the purpose of this uh, data link layer will provide the access to the media. So examples like you have these two computers here, then they were sent to the switch and the switch will pass through the router and the router will use the serial cables to reach to the destination. The data link layer will always responsible to control the transfer of your frames. Okay, it will control it across the media. Okay, so that is the job done by the data link layer. Okay, so this one is we zoom inside our layer 2 encapsulation and decapsulation process. Yeah? If you still remember, the original data is here. Okay, this is the original data that we want to send to the to the destination, and the header here will uh have, will have the encapsulation for the header and trailer. 
Okay, so only data link layer have very, very special trailer encapsulation. The rest of the layer, we don't have the trailer encapsulation. We only have it in the layer two. Okay, so layer two have the header and trailer encapsulation. And what is happening in this uh, header here, you will have the friend start. They will have a uh, addressing. So, so this addressing is referring to the MAC address and not the IP address. It's referring to the MAC address. And we have a different types of the addressing. And then we have a quality control. Okay, so that all this information will be encapsulated in the header. Okay, then how about the trailer? Now the trailer will be encapsulate the error detection and also the frame stop. Okay, what does that mean? Now, if you still remember the layer two is dealing with the binary bits. So if you don't have the frame start and frame stop, yeah, so you, you will you will going to have a very long message from binary bits uh, from the beginning until the end, also in the string of bits. So it will transfer uh, transmit it into the destination. But then if you don't have the frame start and frame stop, then your computer might not know that this message is from where, okay, whether it's from the first segment or from the second segment or from the third segment and so on. Okay, it will tell that which uh, bits will have the start and which bit will have the stop. So you don't have to worry about this because your operating system will, will do all this job for you, right? And then the addressing table is the one that, so it will check where is the destination MAC address and where is the source MAC address. MAC address, right, will keep on changing from one source to the destination. Source destination will be different and then the source destination will be different, source destination will be different. When you reach the destination, IP addresses will be forever the same, but the MAC address will keep on changing from time to time throughout the transmission. That's why your header uh, will have to uh, encapsulate the source MAC and the destination MAC address. Okay, the type we will we will see this later on for the quality control and the type we will zoom in more details for our next uh, slide later on yeah okay so basically for this uh, trailer you will have the error detection also so uh, don't forget this is only for error detection there's no recovery so that is the layer two frame structure let's talk about the layer two standard okay so we have the physical layer then we have the detailing layer then we break it into two sub layer remember this is the mac address layer and this is the upper layer now when you use the cable the ethernet cable it was supported by the ieee error 2.3 so when you use the fast ethernet cable that plug into your devices right the layer 2 device so for example like switch so you have to uh, use the ieee error 2.3 u uh, protocol and if you use the gigabit ethernet that means far more faster you plug into the port of gigabit then you will activate this port ieee error 2.3 z it will encapsulate this uh, information and then if you use the copper, okay, gigabit over the copper, then it will activate this uh, protocol. And if you use the token ring, then it will activate this protocol. So all this is the architecture. Uh, you don't have to worry how it works as long as you have a different cables, you plug into a different interface of the devices. Then an encapsulation process will tell that, okay, if you use the gigabit Ethernet, right, then it will encapsulate the information for this IEEE at O2.3Z. Okay. Ah, so once you uh you 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 plug into this uh, gigabit Ethernet, then this protocol activate it will encapsulate the information already, right? Then it will tell the logical link control uh sub layer said that okay, everybody using the IEEE at all two dot two. Ah, okay. Except for this Ethernet, yeah, Ethernet is a uh, both layer support uh both sub layer support the data link layer. Okay, but for here, encapsulation, it will it will stop until, uh, let's say you are using a giga just now, right? IEEE at all 2.3Z. Okay, so once you have done this, then it will tie up, it will pass up to the next, next layer before it reach through the network layer. So upper layer will help you to encapsulate another information called IEEE at all 2.2. So that means in the data link layer got two protocol, these two encapsulate these two information then pass up to the network layer okay so that's how it works uh, same thing reverse also the same okay uh, then we go for 4.2 media access control uh, 
Now for this media access control, we divided into a uh, condition based access. So this condition based access, uh, whereby you will have the computer here. Sometimes in the certain material or certain book, we call it NODES, N O D E S. So this N O D E S is uh, considered as our end device. So it will refer to this NOD, okay, N O D E S. Not one, not two, not three, for example. So all these knots here is operate in a half duplex. Okay, in a half duplex. What is the meaning of half duplex? So half duplex means that like a walkie-talkie, when I want to talk to you, so I have to press the devices and then I say, Roger, Roger, okay. Then if I finish my conversation ready, I will say Roger and out. Okay, so that means you know that, oh, okay, I already uh, uh, finished my message. So this is how they use a the walkie-talkie to communicate with each other. So in the walkie-talkie transmission, you only support the half to bless. That means when the sender want to send a frame to this receiver, receiver cannot send the frame simultaneously, cannot. You have to wait until this sender finish sending the frame, then only complete already, right? Uh, then only the receiver will send the frame to the sender, okay? If anything, uh, anybody want to send. So it will only allow one device yeah, can send at a time. So that is the half duplex. So this half duplex uh, will compete, okay, for the use of the medium. They have, uh, these two, they are actually compete with each other, okay, to get a bandwidth. Let's say you subscribe for a bandwidth of 100 Mbps. So they are actually sharing this bandwidth, okay? So that is the meaning of contention-based access. Okay, this is the standard organization that support for your networking standard. Like when we talk about the IEEE, so there will be a different protocol that support whether you use a WiMAX or whether you use a Bluetooth. So there will be a trigger the protocol of l 2.15 or if you are using a wireless LAN, so it will have a l 2.11 and so on. So all these protocol is support for uh, any of the different types of the networking standard, yeah? Okay, but all this is support by the IEEE standard organization. Now, if you talk about the uh, other protocol, like for example, Frame Relay or ISDN or ADSSL, so all these are protocol, it will control by ITUT, okay? And then uh, if we have another like uh, FDDI, Media Access Control, and also HDLC, it will control by ISO. So it just to tell you that standard organization that in charge for uh, different types of the networking standard. Huh? Okay, so this one you don't have to memorize it as long as you have to understand uh, which uh, standard networking standard is for on the category of the standard organization. But our focus will be more on here. Okay, IEEE standard organization whereby they will consist of all these networking standards. So we talk about the controlling the access to the media. Um, like for example, as I mentioned just now, this is called the shared media. That means uh, any uh, computers or we call it the not, uh, these are connected to the backbone. So they are sharing a shared media like this computer, this computer and this computer, these three computers is actually shared the medias. So they need to have a rules on how to share the media. Okay, so three of them because they are sharing. You have the PCA sharing the uh, this media, PCB also sharing the media, and PCC also sharing the media. So they need to have uh, standard rules uh, to determine how they will share the media. Yeah. Okay. So later on, we will we will see this uh, in more details how the controlling access to the media works. Okay. Now let's, if you still remember the physical and logical topology, so this is a recap of our chapter two. Uh, it will divide it into two types of the uh, topology. The first one will be physical. So how do I know that this is a physical? As I look at this uh, floor plan here, I go and visit the real company, right? And then I will see that, okay, in my classroom one, I can see the arrangement will have three PC connected, connected to the classroom hub. Then when I walk around to the classroom two, I can see the three Three computers connected to the classroom hub and so on. So I can use this diagram to illustrate the physical arrangement of my uh, devices, okay, of my networking devices when I really go to visit the company. We talk about the logical topology. So the logical topology you see here uh, is not drawing the real 3PC, but it will use the labeling. 
okay, to represent that this is the logical. So it's identify the virtual connection between the devices using the device interfaces and also using the IP addressing schemes, okay, to identify that you, you have how many computers. So that is what we call logical topology, okay? Uh, next, we have uh, three common physical wide area networks topology. Yeah? Let's go for point to point first. Uh, if you look at the point to point here, this point to point is the permanent link between two endpoints only. That means you have two devices, one point to another point. So if you have two devices, it is called point to point topology. Okay. And, and when we talk about the hub and spot, Okay, normally hub is our server. So uh, the hub and then all this is the, uh, the what you call it, the spot. So when uh, when you want to send a message, so this server, like for example, the lecturer PC uh, sharing the practical files to all of you. So it will go to this computer and then it will just click one shared folder only and then everybody here will receive it. Now in this uh, connection, it is called hub and spot topology so a central site interconnects to the branch site here using a point-to-point -point link ah so it will be a combination of this but inside here the middle here is called hub okay then when we go for the mesh now the mesh topology do not have the hub so everybody we have like a client server so so you will have a, a devices and all these devices will provide a high availability and, but then it will require your end device uh, to interconnect to each of the system. That means if I'm here, uh, this computer, I have to connect to this computer, I have to connect to this computer, I have to connect to here, here, and here. So if I'm this computer, then I have to make sure that I connect to this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. Uh, so until you form a complete uh, diagram of the full mesh topology. So full mesh topology means that any of the devices that are connected to you, so you have to link, you have to provide a cable, then so you link uh, all together. So that is what we call full mesh topology. Okay, so talk about the this uh, what error levels. Okay, this one is repeated for just now. So we zoom in, then it will have the point to point topology. So this point to point topology will have the not one and also the not two. And remember, yeah, point to point, it will limit it to two knots only. Uh, okay, so physical point to point topology directly connect to two knots. And two knots do not have to share the media with other hosts. And uh, this uh, not here. Uh, uh, does not have to make any determination about whether an incoming frame is destined for for it or on another node. So you, you don't have to determine uh, when it will going to come, but it will just uh, send, okay, limited to these uh, two nodes only. Therefore, the logical data link protocols can be very simple as all the frames on the media can only travel to or from the two nodes. Okay, so this one is very simple there. Either this transfer here or either the not to transfer to the not one. Okay, all right. And uh, when we talk about the logical point-to-point -point topology, so is the end nodes here, this end nodes here communicating, okay? Again, in the point-to-point -point networks, and then it can physically connect via a number of intermediary device. So your intermediary device must be, must be here, but it can be, it can uh, do the physically connected also. Uh. So this is what we call logical point-to-point -point connection, but it will control by the internet service provider. Do not, do not need to worry about the inside the cloud here because if you have the physical uh, devices connected inside here, right, it will not going to affect your logical topology. Yeah? The logical here, uh, it will form the virtual circuit, okay, inside here. Okay, next, uh, just now maybe some of you puzzle, what is the logical point-to-point -to -point topology? So if you visualize it, you might inside here might have the modem or maybe the switch and then connect to the router and this router connect to another intermediary device of course and then it will connect to the layer 3 switch you add in how many devices also it will not going to change your logical uh, topology design then the media access control method used by the data link protocol is determined by the logical point-to-point -to -point topology not the physical topology 
Now, this means that the logical point-to-point -point connection between the two nodes may not be necessary uh, be between two physical nodes at each end of a single physical link. Okay, so that is how it meant by logical point-to-point -to -point topology. Alright, so let's go for half duplex and the full duplex. As I mentioned just now, half duplex, only one device can send or receive at the same time. But for the full duplex, like what I have right now, you can interrupt with me anytime. Again, when I send a message, you can also uh, send a message to me. You can interrupt anytime. So it will allow both devices to simultaneously transmit and receive on the shared video. So the good example of the half duplex will be a walkie-talkie. And the good example for the full duplex will be our handphone. So when I give you a call, and then uh, we are using the full duplex communication. Okay. Uh. Okay. Next, we talk about the contention based essays just now. So the contention based essays, as uh, uh, we understand that all nodes operating in a half duplex. So you were competing for each of the medium examples like a uh, CSMA CD and also the CSMA CA. Uh, CSMA CD is more on the legacy bus topology internet, and for a CSMA CA is what you're having right now uh, at, at home. If your devices is actually using a wireless LAN, so you are using this method CSMA CA. If you use a cable, then you are using a CSMA CD. Okay, so these two, no matter CA or CD, it will fall un under this uh, contention based access. And the second method, we talk about the control access. So the control access would normally, if you deal with the networks such as Dockery and R, ARC and ET. Now, what do you mean by legacy? Legacy is something like a history. It's a very, very old uh, history already. So this Dockery and ARC and ET is uh, under the category of the control access. Okay, it will determine who and who will send the, the, the data, okay? From where to where uh, and, and when you, you are qualified to send. So all this done by the control access. Okay, now we will go through very details the characteristic of the contention-based access. So remember just now, contention-based access divided into two uh, technology. The first one is CSMS CD. And the second one will be the CSMA CA. So CD, there is a protocol support for l 2.3 Ethernet networks. And for your CA, CSMA CA, which is the collision avoidance, uh, the protocol involved will be l 2.11 wireless network. Okay, so this is the protocol involved. And for the characteristic of this contention base means that I have the, remember just now we we got shared the medium. This not one, not two, not three, all this not uh, will have to share the medium. So when they share the medium, they have to discuss, hey, how can I use uh, this uh, bandwidth? Because three of us is sharing. So the characteristic of these devices is that the station can transmit at any time. Okay, not one can transmit any time, not two can transmit any time, uh, not three can transmit any time. Because of that, right, the collision will exist. So there are the mechanisms to resolve this contention for the media. Okay, now let's look at the analogy uh, of our uh, highway. Sometimes if let's say you are here, you can actually uh, cut queue, then transmit here, right? And then from here you can so from here you can actually cut queue to transmit here. It depends on your availability and so on. So what does this mean is that uh, your sharing bandwidth is this highway from here to here. This is for one way lah, okay, one way sharing bandwidth if all this all this bandwidth, all, all this bandwidth you are sharing. Because of this two flexibility already, collision might happen. So in the analogy, if you are dealing with a car, so accident might happen. Because of that, they are the mechanism to resolve the contention for this media. Okay, so same, same thing goes to here. If everybody is sharing the media, so the collision will happen. Okay, if let's say there's a collision happen already, boom, there's a collision happen here, for example. Then uh, this uh, the, the, the bandwidth here, the contention based access, which is your data link layer, it will tell that, okay, so not one, you will have the back off algorithm, you will have your own timer. Okay, maybe 10 seconds. Uh, and then uh, not two, you will have your own timer, maybe 30 seconds. And then not C, uh, you will have your own timer. 
Okay, maybe 60 seconds. Okay, so uh, if let's say these devices want to send, it will have to wait until the timer expires first, then only it turns to uh, to send. So to avoid the collision happen again. Ah, so that is uh, what they say. They are the mechanism to resolve the condition for the media. Okay, so all this analogy already explained just now, so you can uh, refer back. Assuming this is the telephone line, installed in the first floor and then the second line also will have the telephone and then the third line also will have the, the telephone you will actually go to the first floor and then you pick up the phone and then what will happen it will, will listen to the signal whether the signal is idle or busy so if the signal is idle then you will listen the the signal is too like that right but then if the signal is busy then you notice that somebody is talking maybe the person at the second floor or third floor is talking so the signal is uh, busy so when you hear when you pick up the phone you hear the signal is busy what you need to do you have to put down okay then uh, you wait until the signal become uh, idle back so maybe five minutes later you check again whether the signal is become idle or busy Ah, so the first step is when you implement the condition based access method yeah uh, if uh, you want to explain so the first thing you talk about the signal okay whether the signal is idle or the signal is busy ah, okay so if the signal is idle then uh, you can actually uh, press the numbers that you want and then you can dial the numbers but if the signal is busy then you have to wait until the signal become idle now that's the first point you explain all right and then the second point is that to the certain condition yeah, i will have the person who are staying at the first floor and the person is staying at the third floor pick up the phone at the same time both listening is to the transmission is idle and then both dial the numbers at the same time ah then when you reach your destination uh the the message cannot reach so you have to repeat the step again okay put down again then you uh, repeat again the signals and da, 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 and so on okay so what will happen is that so you can talk about after the signal idle, uh, what will happen? Okay, the signal idle, then only you can dial. The signal busy, uh, then you have to wait until the signal become idle. Then the second point, you can talk about the collision. How the collision happen? Collision will happen when one or two devices send the data at the same time. Okay, there is a collision happen. So once the collision happen, number three, how to uh, prevent it? Okay, the prevent it okay so how to prevent it so you will have the back off algorithm so this back off algorithm is that i will allocate the pc uh the the person who the first floor second floor third floor okay if, if you want to read down again you have to wait for five seconds then the second floor have to wait for 30 seconds then the third floor will have to wait for one minute or whatsoever uh, so that is what you you have prevent it okay so this is the overall of the analogy to explain about the contention based access csma collision detection how do you avoid that this person staying at the third floor or any person staying at the second floor they don't pick up the phone at the same time and they don't dial the numbers at the same time how do you avoid this to happen or anybody here that is sharing your uh, telephone yeah? uh, how do you avoid this the answer is i can uh reserve my booking okay so i can reserve my booking everybody here is uh all together got 12 12 people staying in their house right so i can reserve my booking okay today uh monday okay i follow the duty roster like, like you have a duty roster lah. okay then after that uh you you follow this uh, reserve time okay monday who and who were going to uh if you want to make a call then you refer to your schedule if it is not your turn then you don't use it Okay, so that is what we are trying to avoid somebody uh, using the pick up the line and use the phone at the same time. Okay, so that is what we call avoidance. Okay, avoidance means that again, it is still operate in a half the place, but then it will only have one uh, device sent and the receive at the same time. But using the avoidance process to govern uh, when a device can send and what happens if the multiple devices send at the same time so what is the process of this it will indicate okay include the time duration when when for the transmission so i can include not one okay you have to start uh, uh doing the transmission from what time to what time if you have the, any frames to send and then the not two from what time to what time i allocate one hour for you and then the not three i will allocate another hour for you and so on
Okay, uh, so that is what we call condition avoidance. Okay, our Wi-Fi is using this method CSMA C8. Okay, just for your info. Okay, so this one, uh, yeah, uh, as I mentioned just now, is based on our uh, Wi-Fi. So there will be a, something like conversation here. Hey, I see the wireless uh, frames that the channel is going to be unavailable for a specific amount of time, so I cannot send. And then this one said, I see the wireless frame for the channel is going to be unavailable for a specific amount of time, so I cannot send. And then I'm receiving the wireless frame. Uh, so it's uh, something like a blocking already. And then this one is uh, receiving it because they will allocate the timing for this not first. Okay, uh, so it use a method to detect if the media is clear, okay, and then it does not detect collision, but it will actually attempt to prevent it, okay, to avoid the collision happen. So that is about the CSMA, CA, collision avoidance. Okay, next, we talk about the control access. So the control access is the characteristic, the name already tell you the control access, yeah. So I, I like to talk about the analogy, like, you know, when during your secondary school, you know, there's one game called Larian Briganti Ganti. So where is the Larian Briganti Ganti is that, uh, let's say, uh, 100 meter lah, Larian Briganti Ganti. So you have one person uh, standing at this position and then another person standing at this position, another person standing at this position. So let's say uh, this is the user one, this is the two, and this is three. So before this, this person... Let's say let's say your direction is here, lah. Okay, you want to, uh, you want to reach to the destination. Destination is your destination, huh? Okay, so three will start run. Okay, so when you start run, you will you will you will hold the button, right? So hold the button, and then after that, it will pass it to the two. And if two haven't received the button run, uh, uh, then GG already. <laughs> Uh, you are disqualified for the whole game, uh, okay? Uh, so same thing, if let's say the two uh, receive the the button, okay, then pass to the one, then only one can run. Okay, then after that, it will reach to the destination. So who will be the fastest one? It will depend on the button passing, okay? So what is that mean is that only one station, that means one people can transmit at a time. Uh, so devices wishes to transmit must wait for your turn. So if you want to run, you cannot run because you haven't received the button. Okay, if this one and two have, uh, want to receive the, I mean, want to run, you cannot, you cannot run. You have to wait for these three, pass the button to you. And then one want to run, right? You have to wait for the two, pass the button to you, then only you can run. Uh, same thing is that the uh, when we relate to the computer devices, wishes to transmit must wait for their turn. And due to this, right, no collision will happen. Ah, this is very good uh, if you want to avoid the collision. And then, uh, normally, the, the method that we use is the, using the token passing method. Okay? So, uh, which uh, topology will use this? You will use the token ring and then uh, the FDDI. So, these two is using the method called control access. Okay? So, easy, right? Easy for you to understand, yeah? Okay, so you can use this analogy to explain, like, I, as I mentioned, this is the student number one, then this is the student number two, this is the student number three, this is student number four. So my turn to send, okay, if you want to, uh, uh, you, your turn to send, but if you haven't received your button, you cannot send, you have to wait, okay, you have to wait for your turn. You know, pass to here, you want to send, right, oh, not, not your turn yet. Uh, so that is how it works, okay, for the control access. Okay, I have done for the 4.2. Now let's go for 4.3, data link frames. Okay, for the data link frames, each, each frame type has the three basic parts. We have the header, uh, we have the data, and also we have the trailer. Okay, so this one already explained just now, we have the header and trailer, and the original message is the data. So the structure of the frame and the field contain the header and trailer depends on the layer three protocols. Okay, so in this is uh, just to tell you again, it's a media independence, and uh, in the fragile environment, more control are needed. Okay, to ensure the delivery of the header and trailer fields are larger as uh, more control information is needed. So from here to here, you will add in the encapsulation, decapsulation of the header and trailer, and then here encapsulation and decapsulation pass to this satellite. They will have a, they will involve the encapsulation. Remember. When we talk about the data link layer, the frame, yeah? okay, we are not talking about the router, now it's the frame. So it will 
it will have the encapsulation from the physical layer to the data link layer only. Okay, up, down, up, down, the most is at the data link layer. Okay, and then uh, the up, down, up, down, up, down at the layer one, layer two, layer two, layer one, layer one, layer two, encapsulation, decapsulation, encapsulation, decapsulation, hop happen in a one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, like that. Okay, so uh, after reach to the uh, the the router here, and uh, then only it will route to the layer three. Okay, because the router uh, router will support the layer three. So that is why it say the header and trailer depends on the layer three protocol. Okay, so that's how the frame travel from the source to the destination. And if you look at here, the intermediary device, there's no router. Because when you reach the router, it will have the layer three encapsulation and decapsulation. But throughout this transmission, satellite to another satellite, another satellite to another satellite, so your frame, F-R-A-N-E will travel up, down, up, down, layer one, layer two, layer two, layer one, layer one, layer two, okay? Encapsulation, decapsulation happen. Okay, so this is the one that we uh, discussed just now. The header, when I zoom in, they will have a friend start. Uh, remember, we have a very a long string of bits. So friend start is to type, okay, this is the start frame, and then the MAC address, okay, then the type, uh, the type is a, uh, uh, identify the encapsulated layer 3 protocol. So you receive the packet uh, from the layer 3 protocol, you receive that, uh, it, will, it will say that, oh, uh, the upper layer is using what type of the protocol, whether they are using the IPv4 or IPv, uh, IPv6 or maybe the IPX or uh, Novell or maybe whatsoever. Okay, so that is the, the type that indicate when you receive the frame, uh, receive the information from the upper layer. And then after that, you will have a control, and then this control uh, identify the flow control services. Okay, then uh, you will have the data. So this data is the original data, whatever the data that you want to send. So it will contain the frame, uh, the, the the whole set of the binary. I mean the frames of the payload, and then when they reach, uh, I mean the trailer will have encapsulate the error detection. So if your signal is uh, very weak. Uh, and so on, then it will capture, it will detect the errors at your trailer site. Okay, then your trailer site will do the stop, uh, will indicate the frame stop, okay? So this one already uh, mentioned just now. And uh, when we talk about the layer two addresses, it will also refer to physical address. Uh, so the layer two, we can, there's a lot of names for the layer two one. Let me just write here so that you don't confuse. I will just summarize uh, from any of the books or the material, right? Sometimes they will call it as layer two addresses. Sometimes they will call it as MAC address. Sometimes they will call it as a physical address. Now, they got three names, layer two addresses, MAC address or the physical address all reference to the same, which is this slide trying to tell you. Okay, it contains the frame header and uh, used only for the local delivery of the frame on the networks uh, on the link. So updated by each device that forward the frame. Okay, so that is about uh, layer two addresses. And the logical uh, topology and the physical media determine the data link protocol used for internet. Then you will have uh, arrow to the 11 wireless. Uh, this is all the protocol, okay, that support. And uh, uh, to tell you that from, from one end to another end, maybe they encapsulate the wireless frame. And then from here to here, maybe they are using the PPP uh, frame. From here to here, maybe they're encapsulating the HDLC protocol. And from here to here, maybe they will have uh, using a frame relay. Uh, so it will happen, okay, for your uh, uh, the, the encapsulation and decapsulation process, okay? Okay, so that's about the 4.3. So we will go for 4.4 extra information. So what you should know about the extra information, um, you can go and watch the video, what is the local area networks yeah, in the uh, NetaCAD. Okay, so I'm not going to view this video for you, but you can get it from the our NetaCAD. Okay, you go and search for this video, what is the local area networks, then you will have a fully explained of uh, this video contents. Okay, then talk about the frame, the frame, our objective for here are data link layer, the PDU name is the frame. And uh, don't forget that only the frame will encapsulate the header and trailer, okay? And this is the original frame that we carry. 
But then when we comes, I mean the frames, the network layer pass down to the data link layer. Okay, the information from the data link layer, uh, network layer pass down to the data link layer. So the data link layer will encapsulate the frame header. And then the frame header, uh, you will have the contents of the, a lot of uh, uh, what you call that, the, the information that we learned just now. Yeah? Okay, so there is a summary of recap what you have learned. And then the trailer, remember we have the detection error detection and we have the friend stop ah so this is the one okay repeated uh from what we have ah so last week we got some students asking me how do i know that how big is my network if let's say i got the 2 gb or maybe i got 1 gb how do i know that i break it into uh how many portions ah so this ethernet friend if you use the um, the, 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 the internet, right? Okay, so if you use the internet, they will have a certain size to tell you uh, support until which, which uh, bytes. Like for example, the data, it can only carry the maximum 46 until 1,500 bytes. Okay, if more than that, so you have to segment it. You cannot segment more than this, uh, this uh, measurement. Okay, so this uh, flag will be indicate the beginning or ending of the frames. Okay, then you will have the MAC address. I always remember this is the MAC address and the address of the one byte here. That means the, the, the this Ethernet friend will allocate one byte only to store the information of the source map and the destination map. Okay, and then the control, what is the control? It's only stored for one byte. So this uh, control is a single byte that contains the binary sequence, uh, which is called the transmission of user data in an unsequenced frame. Okay, in an unsequenced frame, and then you will have a data. Okay, the data will be a, a lot or a string of the data uh, when you convert when the these uh, uh data uh data link layer okay convert into the binary bits, and then when it comes to the frame check sequence, it will it will help you to identify which one is the stop frame, and then uh this will reserve two bytes okay two to six bytes uh for you to capture all this information. All right, so that's how it works for the Ethernet friends. And this is the architecture for the Aero 2.11 wireless frame. So, so what is all this uh, 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 trying to tell you? Uh, that means if you use the Ethernet, this is how the header information encapsulate into your, uh, remember you learn about the OSI model into your header. So all this information will tell you, okay, uh, what is the flag, what is the MAC address, what is the source MAC, destination MAC, what is the control, uh, what, what is the numbers of the protocol, uh, the IP, IPv4 or IPv6 protocol that you are using, what type of the data that you are sending, FCS uh, uh, received from the franchise sequence, whether is there any error or not, if you use the internet frame. But when you use the wireless frame, then this is how, uh, the information will capture inside your header. So you have the frame control, you have the duration, you got the destination address of the map, you got the source address of the map address, then you got the this RA, okay, then you have the sequence controller, okay, and then you will have a frame body, then you have a FCS. Okay, so uh, no need to know everything about this, but just to let you know that every architecture inside the header is different. Huh? So if frame control, I zoom in again, uh, wow, I will get all this uh, information from the Wi-Fi, okay, if you are using the wireless frame, okay? That's it. So that's about the chapter four.